Judy thought they were, you know, old cowboys. <laughs> that job. I'm yeah. a cowboy. Yeah. Here's an old skater. Yeah. Here's where I saw my all the old westerns. Uh huh. I've been here in the theater. Yeah. yeah. That's where I saw my westerns. Huh. Now that is on. Is that on the? No, it's this way. Let's get out around this way, and then you can see it. See, there's there's this building over. <laughs> They're gonna be collector's items soon. <laughs> building over there? Bank building. Uh-huh. So we're walking right down where this Labor Day parade was yeah. in Up September. Down Main Street. Yeah. Huh? And where was your father? He was, he was up, way up in front of this parade. Huh. So it don't show him on no work. Yeah. Huh? What building was that over there? That's, a, that's a, one of the bank buildings. And uh, this clock tower there. Yeah, that is on this side. You see, it's on in here somewhere. Uh -huh. But it can't tell what. Right in front of World Wars. World Wars. That looks like an old theater marquee. Oh, yeah. Seen a lot of movies in there. So you used to come over from the Grove. Oh, yeah, we'd come up and catch a street call. With one many automobiles around. Trick, catch a street car and ride up the corner here. Theater to about to come back. Yeah. Seven cents <laughs> each way. Yeah. I, I was 15 cents or a quarter to get into the theater. Yeah. I think most, I believe about a quarter. Uh -huh. Well, the other night when we were showing you your father on the TV in the head of this parade, how did you feel about that? Well, I can't hardly remember just how I felt. But I know we was in a, a strike, and I wasn't for sure how it was going to come out. But I was back young, and I didn't think too much about it. I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't uneasy. But I, I thought it was doing right. I still think I was right. Well, this was the first day of the strike. Yeah. So everybody feels pretty happy, I guess. Yeah, they're pretty jolly. Yeah. Pretty jolly. <laughs> there was so many, see, so many. When, when they came out, did you think there were going to be so many? Well, I really didn't know how, how many it was organized. You see the spectators. Yeah. See? Uh, I know 28 Dodge, that's mm -hmm. it's almost like that. Mm 
But we was we was way back here. We come up last, you see. What was in what was in the car? Yeah. We uh -huh. come up back of the freight. Yeah. Uh -huh. women in there. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of women. women. Yes. They're all out and all dressed up. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was some of them. Is way back there, say, if you got your Sunday clothes on. So you can see the difference in some different how the different dress. Uh-huh. Yeah, th here's one man that's still got his overalls yeah. on. That's lean. That was a jewelry store. He is he's right in here somewhere, right uh -huh. here, that's lean. He was uh, and the way it's changed now, it's hard to it's hard to pick out the mm -hmm. But it's Gastonia. Yes, Gastonia. Aphids, I believe Aphids. Uh -huh. Aphids are down this way then. Yeah, they're right here. They're right beside the belt. Yeah. That's your belt. Uh huh. They're right, right in here. One of the things I, I note. I believe that's Lee. I believe this is Jewelry School. Uh -huh. right I believe that's that Jewelry School. Uh -huh. One of the things I noticed is that all these signs are are homemade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Not all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All those men with straw hats on. Yeah. I believe my daddy wore a straw hat too. Well, yeah. No, he didn't. That's right. He wore one hat a lot of time. Uh huh. Oh, there was a crowd in Gaston yeah. that day. Most of them were shut down. Yeah. Well, in the Charlotte Observer, the two days before, it said that the North Carolina wasn't going to celebrate Labor Day. And yet, when all these people came out for Labor Day, they d they did celebrate. Yeah. I think that fooled a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. You can come on Saturday. You come town on Saturday. The streets were just practically full. It's only shopping centers. So. You'd meet all everybody in town on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. You wanted to meet anybody, you'd come to town, that they'd be here on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> you remember back Oh yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Now I uh Do you think that we could have them walk? Sure. Without okay. talking. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. okay. We want you to go back and do the same thing, just walking by yourself, just looking around. Go about where they're, they're coming out? Uh, no, about where the mailbox is. Remember where yeah. we started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, Ernest. Ernest, what, you, what I want you to think about while you're walking down here is how they really do. It's interesting. I don't, can't remember how my daddy walked, but. He walked everywhere because we never we we never had a car. Uh -huh. So uh, well, Grandpa Moore.
because it's so white it glares. Parade's coming. Parade's coming down like this. What was that building there? Who's gonna come to school first? You're looking at that crazy. Parade came down this way. Down this way. Okay, let's go on down then. Rocky Hall. This has changed, right? Yeah. Huh. Oh, okay. I guess it was his father owned wagon mill. That's right, yeah. So tell me about this. Uh, this is an old theater. That's where we used to come and see our cowboy, Tom Mick. Yeah. Oh, I can't name them all, but we'd come two or three times a week to see them. Well, do you think that uh, newsreel that we showed you with your father in it, do you think it played here? I don't know. I don't know. No. I don't think so. I don't know. No. He didn't know. He didn't, he didn't show back to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he like do now. Okay. Okay. Keep on, let's keep on down here. Oh, all these empty stores here now. It used to be Chris's nice uh -huh. store right yeah. here. Where have all these stores gone now? Well, we don't got no dime stores anymore. Hmm. Woolworths were like to close. There was a building across the street on uh -huh. I don't see them down there. Woolworths, there's a license of dime store hmm. closed. What was all along here? This was a jewelry store. Uh -huh. This is that. Where the clock is here? Yeah, it must have been. Jewelry. Uh huh. This is see it, Chris. Yes, this, this is a jewelry store back. Uh huh. Back yeah. Then. yeah. Oh, it's sad now. Yeah. Cotton. See up here. Uh huh. Cotton company is our cotton broker. Yeah. His office up there. Uh -huh. Well, they've done their best to try to save it with these. Uh, I'd rather have them watch there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, ready? Okay. Uh, back there, September, the Labor Day, 1934. How do you feel seeing this big parade here, folks? Well, it. You felt pretty good about it. To see that many people interested, yeah, get into something that they think will benefit them, and it made you made you plum proud to know that that many was fighting for the rights. Now, where were you? I was in, I guess I was back in the back, but I drove out of, I drove a car back back to the parade and followed him through. The marker was in front of me. <laughs> and where was your father? He was up at the front, leading the parade with the with the flags. Where did the band come from? Well, I don't know. It must have come from someone uh, local. I, I don't know. I don't know who was in the band, or don't know. I don't remember. But back then, you know, you didn't take me to Belmont. You didn't too much know what was going on in Belmont back in them days. 
What about the music? Well, I had music, but I wasn't close to it. Mm -hmm. I was in back of the bus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You were looking at a picture more. Yeah. Could you tell them the story about the newspaper? And yeah. That, that, that they weren't supposed to have the parade? Yeah, okay. No, I've been... I've been going back and reading the Charlotte Observer yeah. for that time. And the, the Saturday before the Monday, they said that North Carolina isn't going to celebrate Labor Day. And the mills are going to run on Monday. And that was supposed to be the first day of the strike. Yeah. And yet you had this huge Labor Day parade. Uh, that must have been a surprise to a lot of people. Yeah, I guess, I guess most of the mills shut down. Yeah. Most of them. But it might have been a few still running. I, 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 I don't know, you see. For had you ever had a Labor Day parade like this before? No, no. Sometimes we'd have a celebration, but not a parade, lot, not, like, not like this in the number, no. Uh, did your local have a big sign like this? They supposed to, they supposed to have a sign. I don't, I don't remember for... I wasn't, I wasn't up far in the parade, and I just don't, don't remember. I imagine it's, I even forgot the number of locals. Uh -huh. Now, Claude mentioned that. Yeah. But I, I, you remember what? The, the I don't. I, I don't either. 1312. Yeah. Uh, Claude said that the number was 1312. Don't see that there. Way back there? Mm -mm. No. But look at the local. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nine. But sort of, it's still in, see this ain't, this ain't the front end of it. I mean, the front of the parade. That's right. So they just kept coming and kept coming. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there was a, there's a quite a few in it. <laughs> yeah. I think if, uh, if you hadn't called the general strike, and the way that uh, kept building their membership up, I think the union had went over. But one of the problems was for the whole year beforehand, we found this true in Georgia and Alabama. They'd start up a local and they'd fire all the officers and make them move out of the village. Then they'd have some more officers and they'd have to go. Yeah, that's what they Of course, they didn't do that here. They didn't do it in Gage Tony. They might have done it, you know, someplace a little bit rougher than yeah. that. Well, I, think I think I think we we surprised most of them. Yeah. I think that's what happened. They come up so quick and just surprised them. You see, they might have done this if it had more time or something. Just thought about yeah. it. They might have done that here. But of course, they would have had more time to destroy your union too. Oh yeah. yeah. When I think back, I thought, I think if I hadn't, well, I don't know. You know, it's only how strong you are. Okay. If you negotiate, you've got 100, percent they're going to listen to you, see. But if your local weak and they got the number, well, they'd sit of that, what, about how they're going to bargain with the union, mm -hmm. So when the strike is called, it was it wasn't on account of wages, living condition. It was just wanting to recognize the union, and it. I don't think it should have come off at that time. Mm -hmm. Too early. We didn't have we didn't really have time to get as many in in the locals we should have had. If it went on a maybe a year or so, uh, I think it'd been different. Mm -hmm. Well, this morning we were talking about the f uh, we're talking with the fellow over at uh, Lore. He was talking about the the 100 club, yeah. uh, which was 100 mean men. I think they well, call they themselves. Some of them call it the Black 100. Mm -hmm. They got that Black 100. That's what. Some of them called it back then. And uh, they had organized the bus 
the union. That's what is organized. Most of them have had a pretty good job in the textile. It's bookkeepers, overseers, and different one, but in uh, but it, uh, I say it had a high, more high paying job than the regular working. Mm -hmm. I say that's where they got their 100. Now, was there anything like that in your mill? In the grove? Not in the wood. Not in the wood. Huh? No. No. That was back, that, that 100 was back in 29. Mm -hmm. That wasn't in the general strike. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we have, I beg you to differ there, because we have material out of the National Archives mm -hmm. that uh, tells about the, the 100s uh, operating in, in 34. Well, yeah. we, we didn't know nothing about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, we didn't know nothing about that. Yeah. Uh, that young one was speaking this morning, you know, he, he called that 100 at... Uh, when Miss Wiggins was killed. Yes. See, uh -huh. yeah. that's the only one I know anything about. I see. Uh -huh. He called that 100. Yeah, that's right. Well, it continued well, it in, in been, the Luray. It might, yeah. it might have been, a, might have carried it on. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. I didn't hear nothing about yeah. it. Uh -huh. Not in the general strike. Yeah. Now, when your fellows got organized, how did you, did you have any trouble with what might be called discipline? No, no, no. When the organizer come to Gastoni, he was advertised and whether to speak. And when it come to our plant, well, when it was advertised, they, they went to the, the meeting. And that's the way they organized. And uh, started off with just a handful and it kept growing, kept growing. So our local, we had a, we'll get a little one Well, after when the strike got started, uh, were there problems with some people doing things that you didn't like, who were some of the pickets? You mean in the picket after the strike started? No, not in not in our plant, huh? No, mm -hmm. no, Facebook. We just. Well, we picked it. We backed up to the gate. Four or five rows of picket. And that's all the picket was done. We just let nobody in the main gate. We didn't bother the, the owner and some of the office workers. They didn't bother them. They let them in so they know they were, they were run machinery no way. Now, what about, you mentioned a truck trying to get in. Well, I'd rather not say too much about that. Uh, the truck driver, he he didn't much like it. And one morning he pulled up to the gate and told us if we didn't move, he's coming through. And the one that was standing there, he was going to run over him. But he, he didn't go through. What kept him from running through? Well, there was a truck driver. I told his name this morning. His name was Paul. He was a sporting a girl, and she might have been on the picket line, his sweetheart. And he just happened to walk up that morning. He was a big truck driver. And you know what, you know about what tr our truck driver was. He pulled out a big long knife, walked up to the side of the truck, told him, he says, you ain't moving this truck. He said, if you do, well, you know what'll happen. So he sat there a few seconds and he put it in reverse and backed off and went on off and he never did come back. Did they ever get married? Yeah, they married. <laughs> yeah, they married. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul Kincaid. Paul Kincaid. Ah, you remember. That's a truck driver. Paul Kincaid. Yeah, that's a great story. He's a, 
he a pretty good sized fella. Yeah. Of course the truck driver, he was a he's a tall, yeah. tall fella too. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good story. Uh, okay. Had it flowed. Just a, just, okay. Could you tell me what happened about that truck? Well, we was all, I was out that morning. I, I might have been the captain of the gate. I don't know. They like some devil one to tell them the rule, who let in and not let in, and keep the peace. That's the main thing, keep peace. And the truck driver for the company, he drove the company's truck. He drove up that morning, stopped, told them to move. They didn't move. He told them if it didn't move, he'd coming in if he had to run over them. And there had to be a truck driver there named Paul Kincaid. He was a pretty good sized fellow, truck driver. And he was sporting one of the girls. <laughs> I think she was on the picket line that morning. And he might have been the bunch, I don't know, but he was standing there. And this thing that truck driver said what he did, he walked up and took his big old long knife out. Put it up pretty close to his throat. And told him, says, you ain't going nowhere. So that truck driver, he sat there a few seconds, he put it in reverse, backed up and drove off. He never did come back. Okay. Thank you. That's the only that's the only thing that I saw any disturbance in yeah. all the all the strike. I mean, nothing happened, but it could have happened, you yeah. see. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have to step back. Okay. And look at over here. Yeah, right about there. Okay. Easy or, easy or not. Uh, yeah. That way, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look down the photograph. Okay, now look up at him. Yeah. I need to ask you. Sure. If you if you're taping that on the wall, just to get some clear out of the bed. Unless they've been able unless you can shot them, you've got nothing but in nondescript background. It's not in that hand? Oh, parade. You had a secretary? Uh, vice president. Bud Hartman was the, the vice president of our local. And they didn't want to put him back, so he he moved, went to work in the feed store right in front of him. Right across the street there. He worked there to he retired. You mean the company fired him because he was Well, they asked they told him they, they wouldn't put put him back to work. They wouldn't Of course they had to Bud Hartman was a vice president of our local. And after the strike, they told him that they, they wasn't going to use him. I mean, he wouldn't go back to work. So he he went up and got him a job at the feed store, and he worked there until he retired. What did you do about a place to live? Well, I don't know right then, but he, he, you know where we had lunch at? Yeah. That, that street come right down behind us. He, he owned a, he bought a house up there, a nice house, on, down that street there. Uh, what they call Myrtle School Road. In all, how many th people do you think had to leave?
just uh, I think it's just, just the president. President, vice president. Yes, yes, sir. They told me they was not wasn't going to work. And the one that they wouldn't put back, it ain't what they've done. I think it, they just talked a little bit too much. I don't know, but nobody ever violated the law or anything but through the strike. But they might have said things that maybe the company didn't like. Why did you think they kept Claude out so long? He was a secretary. And I'll tell you just about the reason. I won about the, one of the first. To, here's where the trolley used to go. And go into Charlotte. That was the trolley line there. Well, let's, let's, let's make a round. Let's make a round. I was a captain down at the gate one morning. Mr. Upton come in. He was one of the superintendents of the dye plant. And he asked to go in. He said he had some book work to do on his payroll. You want me to stop here? Is that in the system? I said. Well, she's going to the Her husband went and run that elevator up on the town. Who is this? The woman sent me. This is Grandpa Miss, Moore Miss Presley? Over here. This is where this lady's sitting on the floor. Uh, right there where my daddy lived. Her mother and my mother were good friends when they lived in Haywood County. Right now, it's going to be outbound 29. Just wait, wait, wait one second. Don't get out yet. I'm waiting for the radio to go away. That's all. Okay, this is Miss Preston. And she, she worked, she worked at, she worked at the Grove. But I, I believe, I believe, I ain't for sure, but I believe it was in, I believe it was in the strike. I don't know. I'm going to get out and tell what we're here for. Okay. I don't know if she recognized him or not. Hey, Edna. Uh, didn't know me. Uh. They're going to take a picture of this house. Here's where my daddy lives, you know. Now, this is, they out of New York. And they're getting a record. The general strike back in 34. Was you in it? No. You wasn't in the general strike. No. Well, well, And I told him my daddy lives here. Yeah. You know, he is a president of yeah. And they've done an interview with me. They've been here as well. Yeah. I left town. We went up to Park to talk to the fire. And they, they stopped here. Cut me off a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's one of them, uh, she dips in the, mm -hmm. them, you know, yeah. I used to go with the girl, she, pretty girl, old Matt Roby, mm -hmm. but she dips enough. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'd never marry a woman dips enough. And I didn't marry yeah, that's the only reason she married me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was her for Matt Roby. Roby's matter, she yeah. knows who it comes from. Yeah. 
So it's all right. I mean, she's all right. So yeah. her husband been dead like a few years. He run that elevator up there and had he, he tarred from the city. He went to work for the city. Mm -hmm. You was going to get out? Well, dun -dun. way back in the 20s and 30s, this street wasn't paved. It just dirt, dirt street. And here's where my father lived. When I worked at the Grove Thread. This is the, where he lived when he organized the union. How different was the house then? Well, it's more, not too much different. They might not have had the, we had a big vine. Yeah, we got to start over again, please. Okay. Okay. Tell me about the, way the street was and so forth when? Well, back in the 20s and 30s, this street was, wasn't paved this, this dirt, dirt road. And this is the, the house my father lived in. And he worked at the Grove Thread. And when they organized the union, they uh, elected him to be a president. Uh, local, and that's where he lived when the strike, general strike. Were you born here? Oh no, I was born in Haywood County. When did you move here, or your father move here? Up in, I say, up in the, in the twenties. Life of the 20s. Hmm. And uh, could you tell us something about the house? How many rooms and all that? It's a, it's a full room, full room house. Bathroom at the back. You go out, go and go into the bathroom. It's a bedroom. That's a bedroom. And uh, must be just a three bedroom house. Three bedroom house. That's what this was. Three bedroom and a kitchen. Huh? That's what it was. Full room house. That's what it is. And do you know how much they paid for it? To rent rent? I'll say about seventy five cents a week. Could have been a little bit more. Four room house. They, they charged. They didn't charge much for three room. They had four room, five room houses. There's a, there's a five room house, sir. That's five room. So you weren't a child in in this section. Oh no, I when I come to Gatesville, I was 14. Come here and October, and I went to work in the manufacturer. 14. Very old, and I went to work. Well, tell us something about this village. Well, this is uh, what they call a new village. My daddy come to Gaston way back there early. And this village wasn't, this was cotton fields in here. The number two mill wasn't built. They had one mill, and we moved in the old village set back to the other side, so we come over there and he decided to go back to Haywood County and move back. When he moved back, he moved in that uh, greenhouse, you know, see that green, kind of dark green there? Yeah. That's the house he moved into. Well, he stayed here a while and he's, I think my brother talked him in going back, so he moved back to Haywood County. And it, it went long to come back, and that's when he moved in here. When we moved in that house there, it was a new house. We sure up and swept the sawdust and shavings out of it. It was a new house. We were the first to ever move in that house. They just built this village and built a new mill. When I went to work after I cleaned machinery up, they had got some 
They're just putting machinery in it. Well, now this house uh, is all fixed up with the, you've got the trees and yeah. the, all of that. Yeah. Uh, when was that done? Did you have grass and all that here? No, we didn't. We didn't have grass back then. Like it, I mean, we had didn't have the grass like this. No, very few houses had it. Back then, you know, the swept yards. They swept. They swept yards. And you knew when you sweep a yard, you sweep it all away. Ain't no grass will grow. That seemed to be the style then. Oh uh, yeah, they they wasn't too many people had grass a yard back then. Yeah. No, not in the mill village. No. Was it much more like the country then? No. Uh, when we moved in that house, there were still stumps on the side of the road here. That, see. It must have been the kind of say, a pine field right here. I, I remember stumps. They didn't have all the stumps out of the, on the side of the road when they built this mill. But now back in here, there used to be a big cotton before they built a new plant. There used to be a big cotton field in here. I remember coming down in there. Out in, the, I believe, out in the first or second grade school when the first time they ever moved to Ashton County. What are your memories of the of living here? Well, it pretty good days. I'm back in my young days. That's when I start sporting, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like to go to parties and dances. And you know, back in young days, your teenager, you it's kind of hard time, but you didn't pay too much attention to it. Where ain't ain't many people back in, you know, ha had much. They this regular working man, he did. He didn't have nothing much. Just you know. my daddy owned a car, and there's a fellow lived out the street here. He had one. Mr. Helton, that's close, daddy. He lived in that house right there. He had a car. He had a great big old Packard turn car. Fellow lived down here. He had a car, and that's just about the only car was on the street, see, like that. And uh, anybody wanted to go anywhere that all? They keep you busy. I mean, wanting to take them somewhere, you know. It, it. Now, Claude, you're talking about, he owned him a little store. You're, that's a, that was a little store right there he opened. He run that little grocery store, shack there for several years, Claude did. Oh, right up there, yeah. that little white building. Yeah, that little ba 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 building there. That uh -huh. was Claude Hilton's, that was a little store. Yeah. And he, he lived there. His mother and daddy lived there, you see. You remember trading there? Yeah, I, both, I didn't buy my groceries there, but... I bought it. I mean, I bought a lot of stuff from him. Bread, casing oil, a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I didn't buy all my groceries from him. He had, he sold, well, right smart, but a little store like he didn't have this, everything in it, you know. Yeah. Did you ever have a company store here? No. No, they'd done, they wasn't but one company store as I remember, and I was up here at the, Back when I left the town, I believe it's a Armstrong Clare Dunn mill in there. Fellow Long run the mill, and they had a little company store there. That's the only one I remember way back there. They even had a company store. Mm -hmm. The only one in Gaston mm -hmm. that I remember of. Could you get into debt with the company? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes you could go and uh, borrow money from them. And they'd take it out on you. You need to enter that. Sometimes if you know the super just right, the bookkeeper, uh, they might loan you some. Yeah. I know the Flint manufacturer across the street over there. I had friends over there, young boys, and 
they could go in the his ten good from up here in town. They can buy anything they want to. That they, they, they let them have money, then and they take it out of their payday. But I never did. Never did try it. I never did. I went to work when I was fourteen, and they tried driving the first payday. I never, I never have been from broke. I'd always have nothing else to have change in my pocket. I never remember being broke after I drove my first payday. <laughs> Okay, as and my, my mother they just give us just allowance, you know. It wasn't much, but they we t I turned my money over to mother, but she'd give us allowance a week to a got a pretty good size, and we'd build up to get more, you know. Well, now when did the companies? I think you told me something about the companies putting everybody's pay into one envelope. Well, they done that back then. Yeah, they, back then they put. I still got it. I believe it's a 25 envelope. I still got it. When my father and oldest brother, and myself, we got it in one uh, envelope. His name, my brother named my name, in what we made. And they'd give it to my daddy, see, in one envelope, cash money back then. And so whatever money you got, you had to get from your daddy. Yeah, they well he mother most mother but she was a pretty good manager. She my daddy he's uh he liked to go and he he'd spend money. Of course he drawed a little pension back then. He was a Spanish war veteran. And he drawed a little bit of he drawed a check, but he had the he had this fever when he went to kill so many people. Mm. Uh in Cuba. He had he took a fever down there. Oh, yellow fever, I yellow, guess it was. Well, there was a company out of I believe it was Ohio. And when they hit Cuba they took this fever and it wiped them nearly the whole company mm -hmm. out, he said. I remember reading about that, yeah. Yeah. He said about the well, I believe it said from Ohio. Yeah. I think more people were killed with fever in that war than were oh, killed yeah. with bullets. He is uh, he never did he, he did there wasn't no battle. But they, they lined them up one morning to go into battle. And uh, I believe the Dewey fleet, they sunk the Spaniard fleet and they surrendered. They couldn't get, they know when they, their fleet was sunk, uh, they surrendered. But yeah. They told my dad in battle gear and everything. He said, he said, man, I was scared. <laughs> he, he thought he was going to, you know, there's on the island. They had soldiers that are just like the. Yeah. I think did the Spaniards was, but when they when they sunk, sunk their fleet, well, they had to give up. But they know didn't have no supply line, and they they surrendered. Did any of your brothers go into the First World War? No, they were in the Second World War. I had two brothers there. And they went to the Pacific, and uh, when I was drafted. Uh, I was to go into the Navy, and I was to leave on Monday, and the headlines come out, everybody over 26 not port for duty, and that's the reason I wasn't directed. I stayed up, I wouldn't join for my brothers, both of them wrote me and said, stay as long as 10, 10, he said, it's rough. <laughs> so I didn't volunteer, but when I drafted, I was supposed to leave on Monday. Are there any favorite places you've got around here? Well, not not particular, but when I come down these streets, it seems like I'm back home. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over and look at Claude's place. Okay, guys. Okay. Don't walk right there. We'll, we'll walk right in here. What do you think of this over here? Okay. Yeah. Okay. My oldest brother, he worked. A, he lived the last house on this street. And uh, brother-in-law, my seven-year-old sister, he lived in the second house here. Mine mind is, he lived there. And back in, 
practically everybody lives here and works the crew. Do you know that? Do you know their politics? Where they went to church? You know, you just, well, it's pretty close knit. Yeah. So, that's the reason, uh, if, you're, if you're a pretty good politician, you know everybody, you know if they're Democrat or Republican. And when I drove back in every election, I'd drive, I'd haul people, voters to vote. I know where everybody lived. See? And I know that, I know that, so I'd go and I'd sit to got the polls and vote. See? They don't do that no more. Now, if everybody knew everybody else's business, yeah. what did you do if you didn't want other people to know your business? Well, you just keep quiet. You keep quiet. You don't. You know, it's some things you don't. Uh, you don't tell. Them. Is it possible to have secrets in a village like this? Ever, everybody's got a secret. See, everybody's yeah. got some. It if you want to. <laughs> 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 okay. No, you don't. Everybody didn't know. Everybody. Ain't know. Ain't know. Ain't know enough about you. See? Yeah. Working with them, living with them, ain't no dis, ain't no kind of person you are, yeah. what you were, you see. Yeah. What about the bosses? Did they know what everybody was thinking and doing too? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that must have made it pretty hard to organize. I'm gonna get a that. My main boss man, he lived. Up on the street, I'll show you. We'll go around and go around. Okay. I'll, I'll live on the next street up there. Well, let's walk around. Uh, second time my daddy moved to Jay Tony. It's a new village, and this is a house he moved into. Uh -huh. Four room house. And my brother, he. First time we ever. He didn't have one meal. He was working, I was going to school. He didn't like mill work, and he talked me into going back, farm, and, and he come back. And this is how they done a new mill and hard, hard hands to go to work. I had two uncles here. I had one on my daddy's side, and one on my mother's side. They lived. One of them lived up on the front street up there. Mother's brother did. They come from Cap North Carolina down here. You know where Cap that? Mm -hmm. They come. He worked in. Champion. Oh, company. Champion Paper Company. Yeah, he worked yeah. there. And uh, he, he come here and his family. And we, we moved in this house. And we swept the shave and we're the first ever moved in that house. Huh. So there, was a, there was a house right in here. It burnt down. A little in between this house. So it burnt down. I remember the smell of that shavings. Yeah. Uh, fresh, yeah. fresh lumber. And when they sold the houses, my brother-in-law lived in a three-room house, my sister, and this is the house he bought, brother-in-law. And uh, this is their son, owns this, uh, him and his boy owns this racing team. They've been doing that now for a few years. He, he used to be in the fire department. He, went to, he was in the Navy, and he, he worked in the fire department. He went to Greenland. In Florida, and he didn't fire department come back. He got in the fire department over here, and he, he stayed there until he retired. You see, and Quint Mathis, he lived in West Case Tony now. He bought a house up there, but his son still lives here. Did everybody back then have a dog? Dog, yeah, no, no, no. I used to hunt some possum hunt and rabbit hunt. I had I had a few hounds, but I, I didn't keep them regular when I lived there. We had no possum dog and we'd hunt him. Neighbor that I met the Melton down there, he was a possum hunter and his brother had the possum hounds and we'd, uh, we'd hunt at night. Rabbit hunt back then. We had a, one little dog when we lived there, I called him Cricket. Little five, black and white. And I take candy and learn, learn him the tricks. I learned to roll over and speak. And when they left here, they took him to Carwell County with them. And he made one of the best squirrel dogs. 
he tree a squirrel <laughs> and he must have had one tree that he come in somebody cut his throat yeah that, that killed him it, nice pretty little yeah. dog so it seems to me from what you're saying that this wasn't very far from the country I mean that people lived kind of like they had lived in the country well See, they had their, they had their running water, electricity here. No telephone then. Back then, if you if you wanted to call anybody, you had to go across over here, across the road, plant manufacturer, the timekeeper of our fellow Harshall, He had a telephone. Everybody practiced had to have a doctor and thing. Go, Mr. Harshall. He had a telephone. Wasn't no, wasn't no telephone, no any, no other telephone in the village back then. What about gardens? Garden. Oh yeah, everybody had a garden. Daddy had a garden there. He had a garden back here. Small garden. He, everybody, most most people had, you know, they they put out small garden. Mm -hmm. And my dad set out a bunch of peach trees. He quit garden. But when he set out those peach trees, that was in the 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 on the land that the mill company owned. Oh yeah, here's the edge of backyard. Did backyard. they furnish the peach trees? Well, they barred, but uh -huh. he didn't keep them up just like he ought to, and they didn't buy the fruit like you should. Mm -hmm. should by him, they got them set out. They. He didn't fool them too much. <laughs> yeah. And he liked to pitch horseshoes. Yeah. They'd be right where that little store was. They'd have a stake here and down here. And that's where most of them pitch horseshoes, see. And my daddy did, uh, he wouldn't go to town unless he changed clothes and dress up, you know. He'd come go to town his best clothes. If there was a short horseshoe game, he'd stop, pitch horseshoe. He'd get dirty. My mother would get on him about it. Because <laughs> he's dirtying up his best clothes. <laughs> I remember.